ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. It was shocking. They just, and they see the smoke because they live close to the coast. So they can see that the smoke and the, the it's, it was like a nuclear blast. Local families shaken tonight after a blast sending shock waves for miles in Beirut, Lebanon. There are now at least 78 people dead and 4,000 injured. The blast felt over 100 miles away. The cause is unknown, but the Interior Minister says the toxic chemical ammonium nitrate is likely the cause of at least one blast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Our ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Pura spoke with a North County man who has family in Beirut that live near the blast. The man that I spoke with grew up in Beirut and knows the area well. He is just in disbelief and horrified at the images he saw today. Oh, it's just shocking to see the whole city, the, whole, the buildings collapsing. Eli Fagali lives in Encinitas, but right now his heart is with Beirut. This was the moment a massive explosion erupted at Beirut's port Tuesday. Eyewitness video shows a fire and a series of smaller detonations at first, then a devastating explosion sends a mushroom cloud across the city. Fagali's sister and niece lives nearby. Thank God they were not in that area, which is like central Beirut. They were safe and they were, they, they heard the blast. They, sh they it shook uh, their buildings. It was shocking. They just, uh, and they see the smoke because they live close to the coast. So they can see that the smoke and the, the it's, it was like a nuclear blast. Buildings were destroyed, cars and shops shattered. Officials in Lebanon say there were 2,700 tons of ammonium nitrate, an explosive compound stored in a warehouse. But the cause of the blast is still under investigation. The, the sad news is one of her best friends, my niece's best friends, passed away in the blast. That's right away they found out there are many, many people under the rubble that are unaccounted for. This video shows the chaos after the explosion. Streets littered with glass. Fagali says he has other relatives living in the area, cousins he hasn't heard from yet. We can't get a hold of them yet. Uh, I'm, I'm praying that no one, you know, no one is, is dead or injured. He says some areas don't have electricity, so he hopes to hear from them soon. He also hopes the region can recover from such a devastating event. I, I pray that uh, we get a lot of help from, from anyone. We just need a lot of help. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. We are happy to report that just into us, Fagali contacted ABC 10 News saying that he was able to get a hold of his cousins in Beirut late tonight. They are all okay. We are glad to hear that. And tonight, the Port of San Diego commissioner is reacting to the blast in Beirut. Rafael Castellanos tweeted, quote, what happened today in Beirut's port district is horrifying. I know everybody at the Port of San Diego and the Port of San Diego Harbor Police is pulling for the victims of this tragedy. Earlier today, President Trump weighed in on the events in Lebanon, saying that it may have been an attack. Based on the explosion, I've met with some of our great generals, and they just seemed to feel that it was. This was not a uh, some kind of a uh, manufacturing uh, explosion type of event. This was a, uh, seems to be, according to them, they would know better than I would, but they seemed to think it was a uh, attack. And again, right now, the prime minister only indicating that tons of stored ammonium nitrate caused the blast and how that happened is under investigation. And you can follow any developments by downloading our free mobile app. Just go to the App Store and search 10 News. San Diego businesses can continue operating outdoors for a full year. The City Council made that decision today. And as our 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty reports, there is also more money coming for businesses hit the hardest. Tell me how I'm supposed to pay my bills and put food on my table. Charlotte Delgado and her husband Rudy own this Mission Valley salon. They say working outside is not an option. Our service is indoors. I can't operate outside. The San Diego City Council extended what has been a lifeline for restaurants to operate outside. Now other businesses like salons, gyms, nail salons, massage establishments, and churches were given the green light to do the same. But Delgado, who operates a single suite salon, says she should be able to work inside. Our plan is to get loud and talk to people. In this stack of papers, she's applied for every loan and grant possible, but says she's turned up nothing and the bills are stacking up in a household unable to work. It's devastating. We've gone from being a productive, busy, full-time 
stylist duo to nothing. Family-owned CrossFit Unsung says working outside was its only way to survive when other gyms have folded. Being closed for three months already this year, being outdoors is pretty much the only thing that's going to allow us and a lot of other businesses to make it through all this. The city today also reallocating $700,000 to aid small business, each grant ranging from one to $5,000. But for the Delgados, it won't be enough. Help me survive as a small business owner, as a salon stylist. Help me. Vanessa Van Hefty, ABC 10 News. To be eligible for that grant, you must be self-employed with fewer than 10 employees and make less than $100,000. We have more information on 10 newscom And today we finally got the promised plan to crack down on local businesses violating the county's public health order. The county is extending its safe reopening compliance team. It will have an additional 22 staff members to look into the businesses or entities still operating in violation of the public health order. Funding will come from the CARES Act. As we told you yesterday, the DA's office filed five misdemeanor charges against a gym in Ramona for failing to comply with the public health order. The owner there says he plans to fight back. It's not really about me anymore. Uh, it's about all small businesses, and I feel it's my duty to stand up. The county's team will attempt to educate businesses first. If that does not work, it will then move to enforcement. Here are the latest numbers. The county reported 290 new cases today, bringing our total to 30,500. There were three new deaths, bringing that total to 568. And we know many of you have questions about how to navigate the upcoming school year. Tomorrow, we will be joined by Dr. Sandy Feldman, an optometrist, who will talk about the best ways to keep your child's eyes healthy when they're spending hours in front of a screen. You can join us at 9.30 a.m. for the conversation on our ABC 10 News Facebook page or send your questions to tips at 10news.com. The need for more to open up the, the donor pool to more potential donors is very important. The San Diego Blood Bank is still dealing with the convalescent, convalescent plasma shortage. Now, the plasma can be used in local hospitals to help fight COVID-19, but donations from gay men, they could be turned away. As our 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo shows us, some of those restrictions were recently relaxed. The donation restrictions got national attention after celebrity Andy Cohen says he was turned away for being gay. The local blood bank says there are some changes that are making things less restrictive. I think that it's time for the FDA to look at this antiquated rule uh, and say this is ridiculous. I mean that was celebrity Andy Cohen last week after he says he was not allowed to donate convalescent plasma for those fighting COVID-19. I mean, I think that the plasma in my body can absolutely help someone. The San Diego Blood Bank is dealing with a convalescent plasma shortage. I think that it does cause a fair amount of frustration and confusion. Dr. Mark Edmonds is the blood bank's chief medical officer. Do you think that the efforts are, are underway to open up the uh, donor pool to the extent possible. In April, the FDA provided updated guidelines to allow for a larger donor pool in response to the pandemic. Before the guideline modifications, a gay man could only donate blood if he'd abstained from sex for a year. Now the abstinence time frame is three months. Similar changes were made for people who recently received tattoos or piercings. The FDA says the guidelines exist to protect the safety of the blood supply. I do see these newer measures that are taking place as, as a step in the right direction. Dr. Edmonds says there are studies happening right now to see if the donor pool can be expanded even further. The blood bank adopted the FDA's new regulations on July 31st. The need for more to open up the, the donor pool to more potential donors is very important. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. A multi-agency investigation led to the FBI arresting a San Diego man for illegal possession of firearms. Gray Zamudo was arrested Saturday afternoon after authorities say that he made recent violent threats on social media. According to the criminal complaint, agents searched his home and his truck and seized two silencers and a rifle. San Diego police were also involved and seized more weapons, including another rifle, two pistols, and thousands of rounds of ammunition. 
None of the firearms were registered to him. The complaint says that he admitted to manufacturing the silencers and assembling both rifles himself. He now charged with receipt and possession of firearms in violation of the National Firearms Registration and Transfer Act. The military has found the remains of the eight service members killed after an amphibious assault vessel sank last week. The service members were from Camp Pendleton. The Navy used an undersea search and rescue ship to locate the remains and the wreckage. Last Thursday, the vessel began taking on water and sank during a training exercise off San Clemente Island. And the service members were identified this weekend. They range in age from 18 to 23. There was also a member of the Navy in that crew and flags at the state capitol are at half staff tonight in honor of the victims. Governor Newsom ordered the flags lowered saying, quote, we stand in mourning with their families and fellow Marines and sailors.